Hello from sunny Southern California. Monday morning racer here at Pomona at the Fairplex. You've got Auto Club Raceway right around me and behind me. You can see the tower beyond that. you got the San Gabriel Mountains. And you're going to be following closely along with me the Russo Fuel Funny Car Team. But also you'll have interviews and drag racing action throughout the weekend here at the Auto Club NHRA Finals. Right on Monday morning racer. That's next.
racer here in the pits in Pomona, California, caught up with Justin Ashley, one of the rising stars here in Top Fuel. And man, look, I've been following some of your stuff on social media, by the way. If you're not following him on social media, you definitely need to be following him. Look, Competition Plus has been following you, and you were testing this Top Fuel Dragster. You've been in fast cars before. But talk to me about that transition, because like, you know, when I played football, I can remember going from JV to varsity, and it was a huge right. speed difference. So talk to us about that. There's definitely a transition when you move up classes and you get all the way up to top field dragster. And I feel fortunate to be able to be in this position and drive this car, but there was definitely a little bit of a transition period. And we spent a lot of time making test runs, and we started going just to about 300 feet, then 330 feet, and then we worked our way all the way to 1,000 feet just to make that transition a little bit easier. And I came from the A-field dragster category, which I think is the best way to prepare for top fuel. All the procedures for the most part are the same inside the car, but really until you get in the car and kind of get that feeling and know what everything feels like, you can't really understand what it's all about. So there was a little bit of a transition period, but thankfully we kind of got that out of the way during testing and here we are racing and everything's been going smoothly so far. Yeah, smooth might be an understatement. I mean, you come out at Charlotte and make a debut that really kind of turned the year, you know, turned the drag racing world on its head with going past the first round, qualifying as well as you did. I mean, talk to us about that Charlotte run. That, uh, that Charlotte race was a pretty amazing experience for me. It was our debut, so it was the first time we bought out the, uh, the top field dragster. And for me, just to be there was one thing in and of itself. And I was really grateful for the opportunity. This is the best of the best, the, the top of the sport. So just to be able to compete in top fuel was, was amazing. But then to be able to qualify and go rounds, put the whole weekend on a completely other scale. And I just sit in the car and drive. And I know it sounds funny, but you know, what people don't see is the work that the team does behind the scenes to be able to put us in a position to be able to do that. And the people like Strut Masters and, and Auto Shock who help us to get there. So that was a fantastic debut and it's up to us now to take what we learned from there and move forward and continue to grow and turn that into consistency. All right, man, so look, I know we're here out here in sunny California, 70s today. It's gonna be possibly in the 90s by the end of the weekend is what they're saying, but it's certainly not that in New York right now. There's snow on the ground when I left a lot. I had to shovel outside of Rochester. You're a New York boy yourself, so look, with winter coming, what type of winter activity, sports do you like to do? You're looking forward to get out there and being cold but having fun. So I love New York, but one thing I do not love about New York is the cold weather. So uh, now that December, January, February, it's coming up, it's gonna get cold, it's gonna start snowing quick, but in the winter time, I mean, most of the time I spend time working, to be honest with you, fixing and flipping houses, but when I'm not working, I, you know, I love to, I love to be involved in sports, so I like watching the New York Jets, which might not be such a good thing right now, it makes it a little difficult for me, but I'll be watching all sorts of different kind of sports and uh, going to the gym and making sure that I stay physically fit, spending a lot of time at the PRI show, and spending even more time making sure that we're prepared and, and ready for next season. Awesome. Well, Justin, look, thank you for your time. And folks, thank he you. might flip houses, but he gets that dragster straight down Broadway. Appreciate thank it. You, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
sat down in there. Monday morning racer caught up with Jeff Wren here. Jeff, first, the first qualifying run to the second qualifying run here at the uh, Auto Club Finals at Pomona, completely different. Uh, talk to me about the differences of the two runs here on Friday. Sure. Uh, so we went to Vegas, and the track was like really good the first run, so the car shook, so we made some adjustments to make it run better early. So we came here and started off with that same adjustment, and it was just probably too much traction for our car, and it slipped the clutch a little bit too much and shook. So then for the second run, decided to uh, basically move the clutch timers out a little bit. Uh, we changed a few things to make it run better early. And uh, when we did that, it went 898, 60 foot. And we ran pretty good. We ran uh, 232, 328, 268. And I shut it off probably just past half track. Uh, on that particular run when I left, I hit the throttle and some fuel started spraying on the window. And at first I thought it was the port line, which is not the best to drive with fuel coming up, but it felt still good. And then it started running really good, and uh, eventually so much fuel came out I really couldn't see anymore, so I just shut it off there. So probably 700 feet. Um, so it went 409, only 273 or something, but I went 268 to half track. So probably good enough to run 404, 405, something like that. Right, right. I know. Uh, Miss Helen, she, she, Miss Russo, she mentioned that, you know, they had not been in the O's mm -hmm. with four O's for a little while. So yep. that's a that's a good accomplishment on a track that, you know, me watching from the stands, it was tricky. You know, yeah. some big name teams were not getting down that track at all. Right. And a 409 in the conditions was was respectable. Yeah. But a funny car doesn't have windshield wipers. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. So the 409 here ended up being number eight. But we were in Vegas last week and going from Q3 to Q4, uh, 392 is number 12. So it shows you how much different the track was. Now, generally speaking, when you see one or two cars don't make it, but the rest do, you know, okay, well, those one or two guys were lost a little bit. But here, there's a lot of big teams that just didn't make it. So pretty tricky track conditions here. Awesome. So, you know, obviously you're in the car this weekend. Do you have any other responsibilities with the team as far as, you know, tuning or wrenching or anything like that with the Russos? Yeah, so I, I build all their clutch packs for them and basically put the clutch in it. Uh, and adjust that and then tune it, I basically tune it. So we'll blower overdrive, head gasket, uh, timing maps, all valve maps, I kind of do all that stuff. And then Mikey works with us, Mike Smith, you know, Paul Smith's son. And Mikey basically takes care of some of the management stuff and then the engine makes sure all that stuff's good and I kind of take care of the motor plane back. All right, so folks, if you don't know, this man teaches at the Frank Holly Drag Racing School. And I've got to ask, man, the wildest instructor story you've got give it to me oh uh, boy there's a few of them trust me um, probably the one that was probably the coolest in a way even though it didn't sound that cool we had a fellow that had had uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma or whatever like a long time ago back when they didn't really have a cure for it so he just zapped him with radiation so much it blew a hole in his foot believe it or not right so he wanted to drive the alpha dragster so he made a couple of runs wasn't doing all that well and then Finally, he goes, I'm gonna go further. I go, you go as far as you want, right? So he went a little further, ended up hitting the wall, but not hard, like just bounced it off the wall a little bit. But he was so happy, and his wife called me after saying that it was like a dream come true for him, and unfortunately, two weeks later, he passed away. So that was really cool to, like, he, that made his, made his, not his life, but obviously, but he was pretty excited towards the end there. So that's Definitely, cool. that's, that's awesome to give someone that moment. He got yeah. the full experience, he, he hit the wall. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty gnarly. Yep. Oh, well, Frank, look, we hope you and the Russo team do well this week. We'll catch up with you later. Sounds perfect. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. 
Monday morning racer here in the Russo Funny Car Pits, caught up with Peter and Helen Russo. They are the brains of the, of the operation. They're the paycheck behind the operation. They are the bosses. Guys, right now currently are at a 409, eighth on the board, going to sit out the first qualifying session here on Saturday. But I think things look up for the team. How do y'all feel the weekend so far? <laughs> well, we're, we're pretty impressed. To do that run yesterday in those conditions was amazing. It's given us a real boost because we just don't do this very often. So for us to achieve what we achieve is just amazing. And I think it's testimony to the smart people we have with us. Awesome. So. I also want folks to know, yes, y'all are owners, but y'all, your hands are dirty. Y'all been working on this car. So what are your specialties on the car that you're, you're doing? Well, we used to run the VOSL, so we were virtually doing everything. So now we sort of step back a bit. We do the clutch. We've got the other guys now. So we just sort of get back a little bit. But yeah, we used to do everything ourselves. And so do it all. You know how to do it. Yeah. And, and for me, I can't let that car get too far away from me. So. Doing the clutch is one way of staying in touch with it. It's, 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 we, it's our life, and so to step too far away from it would be too hard. I know it annoys the crap out of Jeff and the guys, but that's what we like to do. We're workers, we're used to working. Awesome. So, obviously, Folks are going to be able to tell by the accents. You're not from the United States of America. You're originally from Australia. You're still in Australia, and you're commuting to the States to do nitro fuel funny car drag racing. Why? Uh, that's really a good question. Which we answer it. Why? The sickness, I think. First of all, it's a sickness, but it was a sickness that couldn't be treated in Australia because in the early 90s, uh, the powers that be started manoeuvring fuel funny car out of the drag racing scene. So that by the mid 90s, there was a very clear message there that we didn't want, the, sorry, the powers that be in Australia didn't want fuel funny car. Uh, they said the country couldn't afford two, fans did, but two nitro classes. Yeah. The fans did. And so because we wanted to run nitro funny car, this was the only place on the planet we could run it. Um, and here you're with the best of the best. Uh, and we know we're punching above our weight. But we just keep trying and I think that, you know, over the years people that we race against are finding out that we can't be dismissed. In fact, I think the California Pest Management support here is probably fairly indicative of what people might think about us. We're pests and we need to be managed. But um, we race here because this is the only place on the planet where you can run big show. Awesome. Well, look, y'all might not, y'all might be the pests of the field, but you're definitely doing some punching. Because the yeah. 409 with a fuel leak having to shut off early, as Jeff Arin mentioned last night in the interview. That's not bad at all. Y'all doing pretty good for a underfunded underdog team. So y'all keep on pesting away. That's a very smart driver. And 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 we you know, again testimony to our crew. We don't give them much to work with. We try and give them the best that we can, but we don't give them much to work with and they are all really respectful of our situation and of our parts. We've got a smart driver. He he respects our situation. And a good, good car chief and we couldn't, well, our best crew ever, we couldn't ask for anything more and um, it never ceases to amaze me what that heavy old little Monte Carlo can do and I keep thinking well if we didn't have the heavy old car, what could we be doing? Right. Well guys, y'all are doing well this weekend. Hopefully you're in the show racing and going some rounds on Sunday. Keep on pesting away. Keep on taking some jabs at the bigger guys. And a lot of folks are rooting for you. And guys, look, 
Peter and Helen here, definitely go like the Russo Fuel Funny Car Team on Facebook. Follow them on social media. And if you're at a national event and they are in the pits, say hello. And we'll say good day back. Okay. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. And Ryan Rockford in the sportsman category ball in the 1977 is here out of Newport, Tennessee. The college student sits on the right side. And Ryan Rockford is a Kansas, your Division 5 representative will be crowned Summit Sportsman World Champion. Look at him jumping up and down on the starting. Jason Clampy. Out of Circle Pines, Minnesota. Nine boys and dialing for the rider on the bike on the right side. And Jim Weir. Out of Washington. Dialing at 957. On the left side. 17 hundredths of a second head start will go to the bike on the left. And then the other right Jim Weir goes 9.58 on the 9.57, was 0.53 on the tree. No reaction time to go 35, and he lost on a whole shot. Matt Hartford flat and missed the tree. Monday morning racer here in the Pro Stock Pits caught up with Steve Graham. He's driving the Strutmasters.com Chevrolet Camaro Pro Stock this weekend at the NHRA Auto Club Finals. Man, look, y'all changed a few things, took some big swings, I was told by the crew this morning, and it really paid off. Tell me about this apparently personal best here lately. Yeah, we, uh, we qualified pretty well last night, and we were far enough in the field that we felt we were safe. We didn't have to sort of play it safe today. And we've been wanting to try some things for a while, so we took a big swing at some things and it, it paid off. Um, weather here is, is not that good and, and we ran better than, you know, better than we did in Sonoma that's always fast. So, so we're real happy with how that went and um, our best corrected run to date, so uh, everything was smooth and fast and couldn't be happier with it. What was the time on the run? Uh, we went 6.59.5. 6.59.5, that's a stellar yeah. run. Yeah. Stellar run. So you've been making good runs all year though because you've made all nine national events that you have showed up for, you've qualified for them. Tell me, how fulfilling and how also challenging is it to run out here with these big dogs of pro stock and be a small team? Well, the, the challenge is greater than anything I've ever done. We came from comp eliminator racing, which was still still very hard, but this challenge is, is unbelievable. So if we can't outspend them, we're gonna have to try to outwork them. That's all we can do. And uh, it, it's very fulfilling when you get the rewards and they come so, Far and few in between when you get the rewards, you got to just savor that time and, and hopefully you can hang on to it for a little bit. Awesome. So, look, tell me, 
You've got a guy like Chip Lofton with strutmasters.com uh -huh. helping out a lot of teams in the pits. Yeah. How much of a help really is it to you guys? Um, all I can say is the help that he's given us, it changes everything for not just the end of this season, but it changes everything going into next season. It allows us to get some of the things we need to be more competitive, um, freshen up some of the things over the winter that you know you normally are coming out of pocket for, and uh, it's just unbelievable what he's done for us. And um, he's a great guy. I mean, I can't. I feel bad because I can't express how thankful I am, you know, and, and really have him feel, you know, how lucky we are to, to have a guy like him come on board. Awesome, good words, Steve. Now look. For fun here, we're yeah. here in Southern California. You're a Northern California guy. Yes. That's where the car's out of. So, when you got a choice between tacos, burritos, fajitas, which one are you going to? I'm, I'm going tacos. My Another sponsor of mine is Taco Bravo out of Campbell. Uh, Dennis has been with me for a long time and great guy, just like Chip. Uh, you can't go wrong. You gotta get tacos. That's gotta get it. tacos. Yep. No matter whether it's Taco Tuesday or not, get tacos. It don't matter. I don't care what day of the week it is. I'm eating tacos. That's awesome, man. Awesome. Well, Steve, look, thank you, folks. Steve Graham in this Chevrolet Camaro for strutmasters.com. Follow him on social media. Find him. Pull for an underdog like Steve. Steve, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. We've got a 1971 Pinto from all the way out of Atlanta, Texas for Brian Hughes. 374 big inches. Dial at 981 on the right side for the Division 4 racer and Chris Johnson. He has got that 1998 Firebird, 400 cubic inches, dialed in 1050. Head start, we'll go to Chris Johnson in the Firebird, and in the 71, they go to the Firebird. Sturgeon out of Medway, Ohio, the drags are over on the right side of the race track. Dialed in 761, and Dave is here. He's down in 927. And you talked about the fact that they can use electronics as a delay box, so essentially they will be staring square at that top yellow pole as soon as it flashes. They'll let go of the button the delay box will go to work. And just watch as they make their way down the racetrack. Their eggs will be on a swivel just as it was in all of these categories. Trying to figure out the Seven fifty eight on the seven sixty one. Sunday here at the Auto Club NHRA Finals. We're not going to talk about that. You can see that all with NHRA and everywhere else, but we are going to take the opportunity for the extra exposure. And man, tell me about this podcast you've got. Something about somebody in rental cars, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I do a podcast. We started as kind of a joke, to be honest, with my previous employer, and uh, we started doing this podcast. It's called Racers in Rental Cars. And the theory behind the rental car is or the name is, um, I don't know if anybody's ever seen Carpool Karaoke or something like that, but the name kind of came for me from that because we spend so much time in rental cars trying to chase the dream, do all this stuff, and all the stuff that we see during that time, that's what we want to talk about. But we also talk about business marketing and you know how the grind and how this stuff works. Everybody wants the backstory, so we're, we're there to give it to them. And I do it I do it with a good buddy of mine, Don O'Neill. He's a top sportsman racer and uh, out in Indiana, so we, we do it remotely. So it's, it's really cool. It's blown up it's it's uh i never thought i'd have hundreds and thousands of of, uh, of downloads for a, uh, for a podcast but it's really cool awesome yeah definitely sounds good everybody wants that inside line backstory so thank you for giving that no even problem. if it's in rental cars yeah absolutely now 
So you had a decent weekend here at uh, Pomona. Did make the show number 16. Uh, tell me about the team overall this weekend and the performance. What do you think about it? Uh, honestly, I think we did great. You know, we went down there in Q1. We did our normal 395 run, just kind of get us in the show, and, uh, and then we sat. Um, you know, we're a smaller budgeted team, so uh, you know it's a little harder for us to uh, to make all the runs. But if we had the funding, we definitely would be out there for all of them. But uh, we got in the show on Q1. Raced, uh, raced Steve Torrance in the first round today, and uh, unfortunately we uh, it came out uh, on the losing end, but uh, I had him on the tree, so I mean, I uh, did my job as a driver, and uh, you know, that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. All right, you man. You guys can see the rest later. You can see the rest later. Yeah. So, all right, so we're here in happy Southern California, nice warm day today. Look, we're surrounded by burritos everywhere you go. So, if you go in a restaurant, man, Cameron, what are you going to order? Tacos, burritos, or fajitas? Which one's it going to be? I'm a tacos guy. I, I love Mexican food more than anything, and there's a little Mexican joint by my house. It's called Mario's Mexican Restaurant. Shout out to them. I've been going there since I was like six years old, and uh, it's they have the best tacos ever, and their salsa is, is to die for. So um, if you ever want to get on my good side, bring me some tacos. Like carne asada tacos. I'm a sucker for Mexican food. All right. He loves Taco Tuesday. Folks, that's been Cameron Faree here on the Monday Morning Racer. Cameron. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you. Have fun.
Listen to Jeremy's bike. He's going to stage it and hope for the best. Bumping into the beans right now with a championship on the line. Tim Clunton looks sick down there. Everybody on the right side of the racetrack looks like a celebration about to bust out. Gianna's ready.
I don't know about you, but I, I, I can't tell you who's going to be more excited. Gianna, Andrew, Robert, or maybe your top few winner. Speaking of Robert, let's go to the top ten and piggyback on Amanda Music from NHRA on Fox and hear what he has to say. Well, as the 2019 Funny Car World Champ makes it to the stage, words from our president of the NHRA Glen Conwell. Thank you, Amanda. Robert, on behalf of the NHRA, congratulations on your third NHRA Melio Drag Racing Funny Car Championship. Congratulations to you, the Auto Club, and the Auto Club of Southern California. You made an exciting day today. We appreciate everything you've done. Great job. As we turn to the senior marketing manager from Coca Cola, Al Ron, and the championship jacket goes on Robert Height. The championship medal is going to go around the neck of the 2019 Funny Car Champion. And before we get to your interview, the question on everyone's mind is what happened with the burnout? I have no idea. I did not shut the car off because uh, that's actually dangerous, leaving a car out there. Uh, I wanted to do a big burnout for the fans. I told Jimmy to start the car first. I wanted to do a big old burnout. And I was going to back up fast so that you know I could not hold Beckman up. And uh, I'm backing up and it dies, okay? I have no idea what happened. So, um, kind of crazy deal. In your 15th season of racing, this is your best year yet. Your most number of wins. You're standing in front of your third championship trophy. What will that represent for you? Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, I've always dreamed of, uh, you know, now that they're in the countdown era, of winning a championship from start to finish, being good all year. Because I've had spurts in the past where you're good at the beginning, then you fail at the end, or vice versa. We've been good all year long. Uh, basically, all but one race, we led the points. So uh, that's just a tribute to the guys behind me. They're unbelievable. But you know what's amazing is now that you win more than two championships, that puts you in a real elite group. That's, uh, and it's hard to believe that Robert Hyde's name is uh, with that group. Well, for the third time, your 2019 Funny Car World Champion, Robert Hyde. That group he just referred to got two new members today. Both up drive Panaros. Roberts is red, white, and blue. Erica's is all red. But they both became three-time champions here today. Fire the final two cars of the 2019 NHRA season. Oh, okay. 
Thank you. 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 Thank